Hi, this is Dan Irving, the producer for The Wealth Guardian's radio show. Due to the holidays, we are airing a Best of The Wealth Guardian show. As a result, there is some dated information in the show, but the financial principles in it are still strong. If you have any questions for The Wealth Guardian's team, please call 336-391-3409 anytime. That's 336-391-3409. We hope that you have had a happy and restful holiday week, and we hope you enjoy the show. 96.7 FM WTOB. You're listening to The Wealth Guardians with Doug Ray, helping you to retire that job and keep the paycheck. Of course, Bryce is with me, running the board op over there. Good morning, Bryce. Good morning, Doug. How are you doing today? We're great. It's uh, almost uh, Halloween. It is almost Halloween, and uh, something special happens on Halloween, but I uh, can't quite think of what... Oh, it's my birthday. It's your birthday. It's my birthday. Yeah. F- 53 years in a row, it will have been my birthday on Halloween Day. Well, they didn't change it, did they? They, they haven't changed it. No, like my grandfather, uh, his birthday was on November 27th, and every once in a while that was Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving right. But I, 100% of the time. Yeah. Halloween. Best best birthday to have because it doesn't interfere with you're born on December twenty fourth, so yeah. that kind of ruined things gift wise. Yeah. You got gypped out of a lifetime of birthday gifts there, I'm yep. sure. But this doesn't interfere with gifts and all of your friends remember your birthday. Exactly. And you get a, and you get a dress up for your birthday. So yes, uh thank you very much. <laughs> and uh of course another thing that makes this time of year great is Football, boy, there have been a couple of uh, good college football games really lately where the, where the uh, fields have been stormed by the home team, the home uh, crowd, because the unranked teams are upsetting the, you know, the top 10 teams. That's always great to see. I love that. And your Packers had one of the best throwback uniforms I've seen. Wasn't that a cool looking that uniform? Was, that was right back to my youth. I loved that. That was awesome. Yeah. I, I, wish they, I wish teams would do that more often. You know, I'm sitting here wondering what in the heck is going on with the Panthers, though. So many teams. Uh, the Broncos started, are about. To, uh, the, yeah, there's just started three and zero, and they hadn't won a game since, and they've been they got blown out by the Giants. Same thing. Same thing with the Broncos, and I I would not be surprised to see uh, Elway uh, announcing a new head coach here at some point, uh, halfway through the season. They you know, if you're we, we too were three and zero, and now we're three and four. It's ridiculous. Well, you know, I, I'm starting to think maybe Matt Rule was just not ready for the NFL yet. Yeah. Very possibly, yeah. Well, what are we talking about today, Doug? Well, we're going to talk about inflation, because that seems to be on everybody's mind. It is. It's coming up a lot in our uh, planning process. Before we do that, though, let's, uh, as we always do, let's go out and give a big uh, thank you to our uh, first responders, our service members, our veterans. Uh, Thank all you guys and your families for everything you do and have done for us uh, we greatly appreciate you we do indeed and doug did you know that this uh, week was the 100th anniversary of the tomb of the unknown soldier at i uh, did not know that at uh, arlington and my father is buried directly across the street from that like wow. literally 50 yards so from can, that from his grave you can see it yep absolutely wow. it's right across the street under a big tree so that's a very interesting concept there the tomb of the unknown soldier so to all those all those in their families who are in Arlington, we thank you for uh, for your loss and your service and your sacrifice. Before we get talking about inflation, I want to remind everybody we do have a couple Social Security events coming up quickly. Special ones, too. Yeah, uh, November the 4th, November the 9th at 630. Uh, we have Hamilton Morales coming in to present at those uh, workshops. Hamilton is, uh, I've teased him a, a ton by calling them the walking, talking, breathing encyclopedia of Social Security. You will not stump this guy on a question, I promise you. Uh, He taught uh, Bryce and I uh, everything we know now about Social Security, got us our credentials with the NSSA. Uh, You don't want to miss Hamilton. He is excellent. I promise you it'll be worth uh, the hour that you spend with it. Now, prior to that, you might want to go to our website and download a a paper we have called The Four Critical Social Security Facts Retirees Must Know. So you can go directly to the website at thewealthguardians.com, or we've got a brand new way for you to access that paper. All you have to do is text 4SSFACTS to 336-391-3409. That's 4, as in the number 4, SS. Facts to three three six three nine one three four oh nine. 
So give that a try, and uh, I think you'll like what you read on that paper. And if you are the first person to do that, Doug and I will offer you a free second opinion on your financial plan and see if you are ready for retirement. But the first one. How about a free jar of pennies? Well, that's up to you. That's your, you, you are in possession of the uh, penny betting jar right now. By the way, folks, I texted Doug last week when I saw that um, – was it your college team? No, it was Navy. Uh, Navy was playing – who were they playing? Penn? Cincinnati, wasn't it? Was it? Okay, Cincinnati, number two team. Yeah. And I texted Doug, said, I'll give you 20 points on the game. Doug never responded. I didn't. <laughs> they only lost by seven. Yeah. I would have I would have owed you whatever you wanted to bet. <laughs> I was sure you guys were going to get annihilated. And you actually put up a good fight there. Yeah. Well, you know, let's get into inflation. Speaking All right, of let's that, do it. Uh, we know it's here. Um, in fact, Social Security recipients are going to get a 6% increase because of it. You know, Bryce, when, when we first started hearing about inflation, which was probably the first part of the year, you know, the Fed came out and said, oh, it's it's transitory. It's not going to last, yes. you know, temporary six thing. months, a year, maybe. That's because we're coming out of the, the world economic uh, slowdown, not slowdown, but just complete shutdown. And it takes time to retool, rebuild, rehire, that kind of stuff. And that made a lot of sense to me. Mm-hmm. But. It doesn't anymore. Well, how long is transitory? Exactly. <laughs> if, it's, if it's five years, is that still transitory? Exactly. I mean, how long does it take to get a chip factory up to make chips for cars? How? I mean, look at all these ships just sitting well, out there I, in the water. That's amazing. That's amazing. I've got a couple of things I've ordered, I'm sure, sitting off the uh, California coast there somewhere. <laughs> you know, we, uh, my wife and I went down to Hilton Head uh, a couple weeks ago, and, uh, in fact, we talked about it in our last uh, – Friday newsletter to to our clients. I was watching TV. I think it was around lunchtime, and uh, th- they were reporting from the Savannah port, and they showed pictures of the ships just sitting off the coast down there. I looked up off our balcony and I saw them. It was the weirdest thing. I'm sitting there watching TV of the report, and mm-hmm. then I'm seeing these ships out there, and I'm going, "My gosh, why in the world are they? I mean, is it?" They're blaming it on truck drivers. Truckers is, yeah. the, is the big thing I understand. So I don't know, folks. I got some interesting uh, – getting ready to do this show. We've got some uh, some interesting details here. The Fed says that inflation is up 5.4%. Okay. Turkeys, I think, are going to be up 27%. Really? Yeah. Oh, ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the Fed measures a different way to measure inflation, and they're, they're – Inflation is 3.6%. That's definitely lower than where, what we're experiencing, but it's actually a 30-year high Okay. in their measurement. Okay. You know, most of our clients coming in are wondering what the heck is going on, and most of our clients are old enough to remember the 70s-style inflation. Yes. I remember that. Yes, I do too. Were you, you – you were, you're younger than me, so you probably weren't – really exposed to driving during the 70s no but i remember i remember very well that's why uh jimmy carter only served one term was that uh that whole oil embargo thing you know it seemed it seemed like gas in one day went from like 25 cents a gallon to over a dollar then you had to wait in line for a half a day to even to get it Mm -hmm. if you look at the market back in the 70s it was not good no. The the seventy the decade of the seventies folks was essentially flat, but it had two fifty percent declines, two fifty percent bear markets in there. I didn't realize that. Yeah. It was a difficult decade. That was before I was watching the market. I was doing my paper out at the time. Yeah, yeah. We could be in store for that again. Yeah. You know, here's some more statistics about inflation. Uh this'll blow you away. Last year, gas nationwide average was two dollars and sixteen cents. Yeah, it's gone up a uh, today dollar seventeen or so. Do- today, it's th- nationwide average is three thirty six. Okay, it's up fifty six percent. Yep. Now I was looking just a moment ago at uh, WTI crude. That's West Texas Intermediate. Listen to this. Last year in October. WTI crude was selling for $37.39 a barrel. Okay. This morning, it's $83.62. Well, there was one point there where they were paying you to store the oil, a a barrel of oil. Yes, So, I mean, even from that point in October, what was it, in uh, May or so, 
it was basically free. If you could, if you could take a barrel of, of oil, it was free for you. It, it actually went negative. The right. Price went negative. It was just a freaky futures, you know, totally freaky, uh, extraordinary out of balance situation. Yeah. So, yeah. And you know how you can tell when inflation is high? When Social Security cost of living adjustment is announced for the next year, and it's 5.9%. Yeah. We, when was the last time we saw 5.9%? I don't know the answer to that, but it has been decades. I don't know, but uh, I think it's trivia time, isn't it? Is it trivia time already? I think okay. so. So we're about to go on a break here, and then we're going to talk more about inflation. But here's our trivia question. It's time for today's trivia question. Let's see if we can stump Doug. And I keep meaning to get that little bell thing going in here, so I, <laughs> and I need to get the buzzer if you get it wrong. Doug, there are 35 million pounds of this holiday treat made each year, which equals 9 billion pieces. There are 35 million pounds of this holiday treat made each year, equaling 9 billion pieces. What am I talking about? Folks, we've got to go to break, but stick around on the other side, and let's see if Doug knows exactly what I'm talking about. Let's more importantly see if you know what we're talking about. We'll be back in just a moment. I think I know. You're listening to The Wealth Guardian's show with Doug Ray and Bryce Payne, helping you retire the job and keep the paycheck, serving the triad and beyond. Let's get back to the show. 96.7 FM WTOB. Welcome back to the Wealth Guardians radio show on this holiday weekend. Happy Halloween or pre-Halloween to everybody out there. And a happy birthday to me and uh, anybody else who is having a birthday this weekend or at some point in the year, I want to ask you a question. If you're listening to us and you are around maybe five to seven years from retirement, and you're thinking that maybe you need to confirm that you are actually making the best financial decisions and planning for retirement, well, then I've got good news for you. As always, Doug and I here at The Wealth Guardians offer a no-cost, no-obligation, second review of your current portfolio so we can tell you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and what might need to be improved so that your retirement is meeting all of your expectations. We teach you how to retire the job, while keeping the paycheck, the best of both worlds. But the ball is in your court. You've got to, like always, you got to call us. We can't reach out to you. And our phone number is 336-391-3409. That's 336-391-3409. You can also visit us at The Wealth Guardians. Now, normally at this time, before I get to the trivia answer, I uh, highlight a part of our website, which is thewealthguardians.com. But we've got a new technical accomplishment here where all you have to do is pick up your phone. You don't even have to go to our website anymore. If you pick up your phone and you text us at 336-391-3409 and you text us for the number four SS as in social security facts, F-A-C-T-S, for SS facts, we will send you a comprehensive Four critical social security facts retirees must know. But you got to text us, 4SSFACTS at 336-391-3409. We've never offered this service before. We're stepping into the 22nd century, maybe that is, 21st century, whatever. <laughs> We're stepping into the modern world and doing that thing that so many other places do. So try that out and see if that works for you. We would love to be able to send you that uh, four critical Social Security facts retirees must know. Folks, if you think you have planned for retirement and you have never considered Social Security and how that is one of the legs of the retirement stool, along with pensions, 401ks, and investments, then you haven't really done financial planning. And uh, we want to help you out with that. So give us a call, 336-391-3409. It's time to get Doug's best guess on today's trivia question. Now, getting back to our trivia question. As I asked Doug, there are 35 million pounds of this holiday treat meat each year, which equals 9 billion pieces. What am I talking about, Doug? Well, first off, I don't know if we're stepping into the 22nd century. We might be stepping into something, but okay. maybe not the 22nd century. We'll I, see how it works out. You know, um, here's my guess. I think you're talking about those little candy corns you get around Halloween. 
Ding, 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 ding. I got it. All you right. I got it. That's right. <laughs> Nine billion candy corn pieces made every year. Now, here's a backup trivia question to that. I love, I'm not a big sweets person, but for some reason, I do love candy corn. I don't know why, but I, you could put cake in front of me, pie in front of me, have no desire to I eat it. I never cared for them. But candy corn, I love it. Love yeah. it to death. And if you get any, yeah, send it to me, Doug. So yeah, here's, here's the question. Candy corn... What was it originally called? It was not originally called candy corn. I have no idea. It's not appetizing. Chicken feed. Really? Because I guess chickens eat corn, so they were calling it chicken. They called it chicken feed. They called it chicken feed. Obviously, kids weren't too excited about getting chicken feed in their bag, so they changed the name at some point to candy corn. Yes. And uh, that is, uh, and if we got just a real quick second here, do you know when we make a jack o' lantern out of pumpkins, do you know what they were originally made out of? They weren't made out of pumpkins because pumpkins are natural to North America and Central America. But that's obviously not where Halloween got its start. I have no idea. They were originally made out of turnips and potatoes because Halloween really kicked off originally in Ireland and Scotland. How about that? And they figured out when they came over to America, when the Irish came over to America, they realized, oh, hey, this fruit, these pumpkins are much better to make jack-o'-lanterns out of. Amazing. So, I, I'm just full of so much useless knowledge. It's, you you it's really are. I mean, total. Total <laughs> full of it. Total. But Doug's now going to fill us up with some useful knowledge and we'll, we'll step away from my useless knowledge. The first thing I want to do is tell everybody again about our last workshop of the year coming up November the 4th and the 9th. And that's on Social Security. And we're going to have Hamilton Morales again with us. It's been well over a year since he last did a workshop with us, and uh, you don't want to miss him. He is excellent. And that's going to be November the 4th, November the 9th at 6.30. It's going to be in Clemens at the Broyhill. Hill. And all you have to do is call us at 336-391-3409 to register. You're going to need to register. I, I really am expecting a full house here. Um, or go on our website at thewealthguardians.com. There is an event tab. You can register right there. Again, November 4th and 9th, 6.30 in the evening. Doug, why would somebody who is getting ready to retire be so concerned about filing for Social Security? I mean, a lot of people out there might think, oh, I'll just file for Social Security when I reach my full retirement age. What's the big deal? Why do I need to know anything about it? It's, it's a major leg on your Social Security uh, stool, if you want to call it that. And for unfortunately for some, it's their only leg. It, that's true. And there's a lot of different ways to file, and some can be very advantageous for you much more so than filing in the wrong way. There's literally thousands, and particularly if you've been married or divorced in the past, there are a lot of different ways to file. And if you file the wrong way, uh, after a year, you can't undo that filing strategy. And it might mean the difference of tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars difference in income for you in retirement. And you don't want to make that mistake, folks. If you've saved hard for retirement, why not make sure that you're using the right filing strategy for Social Security? You know, to emphasize that, we've told this story before on the radio, but Bryce, I want you to tell it again. People need to hear these kinds of stories. That couple that came yeah. in, they were divorced. Yeah. Tell that story again. So we were doing some planning process with a couple, and they weren't technically married to each other, but they had been together for a number of years, and they were getting ready to retire. They're around 70 years old. And uh, this is a thing, well, we're going to file here at 70, which oftentimes makes the most sense to file at 70 because Social Security grows at 8% a year um, from your full retirement age up until 70 that you don't take it. And as we were concluding the meeting, one of them mentioned that they had been married before. And so you and I stopped and said, oh, wait, how, when you were married before, how long were you married? Oh, um, 10, 12, 15 years, something like that. Okay. And then we asked the, the woman that was there, have you been married too? Yes, I was married. How long were you married? Uh, also around 12 years or so. So the thing is, neither of these people realize that there is called, there's something called ex-spousal benefits to Social Security. If you've been married for more than 10 years and you didn't remarry or are not married now before age 60, then you are entitled to half of your ex-spouse's benefit while not turning your own on. And it does not, that does not impact your ex-spouse and their benefits whatsoever. But they didn't know this. And they could have, at age 66 or even earlier, filed for Social Security off of their ex-spouse's and while still working and uh, been taking those benefits in, they aren't able to go back and redo that. And they missed out. We did the math. They missed out on about $100,000 combined over the course of uh, about four or five years. Yeah. And, and I want to emphasize, you cannot go back and get it 
once you once it's done, it's done. It's once over. you don't file, yeah, it, yeah, they might let you re. They might let you go retro about three months or so, but that's about it. Yeah, hundred thousand laying on the table, folks. You do not want to be the next story that Doug and I are talking about on the radio. You you want to be doing things right. So please, if you are getting ready to file, uh, getting ready to retire, and you're you're not one hundred percent sure what's in your best interest to file for Social Security, this is the type of seminar that you want to sit down with. Yeah, and you know that is a a sad story, but we got a ton of really good stories yes. where we've helped people out. We don't have time to go into them, but these folks started by coming to a Social Security workshop. So again. I know I'm kind of beating a dead horse with this, but uh, this is the last one of the year, and you need to come yeah. November 4th and 9th. And don't think, please, that you can go to the Social Security office and get advice from them. That's like trying to go to the IRS and get tax filing advice. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. Um, they are not certified in the way that Doug and I are certified. Plus, they're not designed to give you advice. They will give you an answer to a direct question. Can I file this way? But if your question starts off with should, they're not going to answer that question. We will answer that question for you. And while we're on the topic, may I invite you in to our office for a second opinion on your retirement? It will include a Social Security optimization along with a host of other things, you'll end up, even if you don't work with us, you'll end up with the most comprehensive retirement plan you've ever had. It'll be written and bound in a hardbound binder for you to take, and it's free. It's no obligation. All you got to do is pick up the phone and call us, 336-391-3409. So, Bryce, we've been talking about inflation for most of the show today. Let's uh, spend the last few minutes and kind of wrap things up. You know, our planning does include an inflation factor. And if you don't have inflation built into your retirement plan, you're, you're missing out on, on a lot. In fact, you, you, you may have a faulty retirement plan. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm looking at our situation, and we've been using 3.6%, which is the 100-year average uh, of inflation. Obviously, things right now are running much higher than that. Uh, I'm kind of thinking that probably for the next several months, year or so, we might want to kick it up to four, maybe even four and a half percent for the planning just to see how things shake out. Let's hope this is transitory inflation. Mm -hmm. You know, what's it going to take to knock inflation back? I remember what happened to get rid of the 70s inflation. Do you? Uh, let's see. To get rid of the 70s inflation, that's when Reagan came into office and lowered taxes. Lowered taxes, but more importantly, what really killed inflation is uh, Federal Reserve Chairman Paul Volcker dramatically increased interest rates. Okay. And everybody remembers, they come into our office and I say, oh, gee, I can remember back in the early mm -hmm. 80s getting 13 14% CDs. Well, it was because of that. But that also created 18% mortgage rates. That's right. And it hurt the economy. Reagan was not very well liked the first couple of years of That's his right. presidency. That's right. He was not. He turned that around yeah. by the time of his reelection. Yeah. And, but it did kill inflation. Now, is the Fed going to have to do that this time around? Well, they can't lower them. They can't lower. That, that's not going to work. What they can do, they have been stuffing the economy full of money. That's why nobody's going back. We're starting to call this the Great Resignation now. Yep. So what they can do is they can start turning that dial back. They call it mm -hmm. tapering. Yes. There's been talk of that. The markets haven't reacted to that talk yet. We'll see how things go. I will tell you, I have been calling for this stock market to go down and go down in a big way. And if they get serious about tapering or raising interest rates, you're going to see the stock market fall out of bed next year, folks. I promise you that. It's going to happen at some point. Yeah. Um, I think they were waiting for a lot of people to get back to work before they do that. But if people just aren't willing to go back to work, then what's why wait? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, there's a lot of good topics there, Doug, and we're going to cover those um, inflation, Social Security, all those things when you sit down and meet with us. But, folks, we're going to let you have the rest of the weekend to yourself here. Hope you have a great Halloween weekend, Doug. I hope your teams win. I hope my teams win for a change. And everybody else out there, whatever your team may be, I hope you win. And kids, I hope you have a great Halloween. And this is 96.7 FM WTOB.